Hello and welcome. You're tuned into Eye in Africa. I'm Rochelle Ferguson Biahi. These are the top stories. Authorities in Burundi suspend foreign NGOs' activities, saying they need to comply with a new law and tighter controls. Non governmental organisations criticising that move. The situation is critical in Madagascar, where almost 50% of children are suffering from chronic malnutrition. Also coming up on the programme, with competition for jobs on the African continent increasingly fierce, our team in Abdijan have been following one woman who's pulling out all of the stops to land her dream job. But first, foreign NGOs in Burundi have slammed the government after it suspended their activities, saying they need to comply with a new law. Well, under that uh, fresh legislation, NGOs will now face tighter controls on finances, administration fees, plus staff ethnic quotas. Burundian officials claim that more than 100 NGOs have failed to follow the regulations. More Julian explains. Burundi's government has already shut down several independent radio stations and local associations. This time, it's international NGOs that are targeted. Their activities will be suspended for three months starting Monday. They will be allowed to reopen, according to the government, if they comply with the country's regulations. After analyzing the way NGOs are operating in Burundi, the National Security Council has concluded that most of them do not conform to the law or the regulations which concern them. The rules include a strict control of their finances, the payment of administrative fees and the implementation of ethnic quotas. Burundi's been in crisis since the president, Pierre Nkurunziza, announced he was running for a controversial third term. His party, the CNDD-FDD, has been accused of stoking ethnic tension and of using its youth wing to violently repress any perceived opposition to those in power. Burundian activists say the suspension of NGOs is mainly a way to keep foreign observers out of the country. The NGOs are often witnesses of human rights violations because they are present throughout the national territory to carry out their activities. This is a way to intimidate them. The state is trying to make witnesses of human rights violations less numerous after already suspending independent radios and associations. Hundreds of people have been killed during protests against President Pierre Nkurunziza in 2015 and in the repression that ensued. Hundreds of thousands of others have fled to neighboring countries. Next, in Madagascar, almost one in two children is suffering from chronic malnutrition, with nearly 50% of those children under the age of five. The World Food Programme is turning its focus to pregnant women and young mothers. Well, earlier we spoke to Deborah Nguyen of the World Food Programme in Madagascar. She told us about the main causes of malnutrition. The main causes uh, for malnutrition in Madagascar um, are root causes. Um, so people don't have ac access to sufficient food. Uh, so it's a problem of quantity and uh, available food on the market, but also inadequate food intake, which means that uh, the food that they eat uh, is not adequate uh, for them, so they don't get the su sufficient micronutrients, vitamins, etc. OK, I read uh, somewhere that after 24 months, the effects of malnutrition are often irreversible. Is that the case? Indeed, there's a critical window, which is uh, what we call the 1,000 days. Um, it means that from conception to two years old, um, this is a crucial uh, time for nutrition. So it means that if a child is already malnourished during this window, uh, he will have irreversible consequences uh, for all his life for his development and uh, his intellectual capacities. Right now, a lack of access to uh, basic health care in the country is also exacerbating this situation. Tell us more about the lack of resources on the ground. Indeed, the, the people uh, in Madagascar don't have uh, enough access to uh, health services. And uh, because of that, it's worsening uh, their malnutrition um, because then they, they can get uh, diseases and uh, if they don't get treated, um, it, their health uh, status gets worse. Now, it's not a new uh, programme as such, but the World Food Programme is more and more turning towards, as I said in my introduction, turning towards pregnant women and equally young mothers. Just talk us through some of the uh, help that, uh, w, that uh, WP, uh, the World Food Programme, is offering. Yeah, so uh, in order to uh, fight um, malnutrition, uh, 
uh, WFP uh, is uh, treating uh, malnutrition, but also preventing. Uh, so what we do um, is that we target uh, mothers, uh, young mothers, pregnant uh, women as well, and children uh, under two years old, and uh, we provide um, supplement feeding. So. Uh, we give them uh, special uh, nutritious products um, adequate for, for their uh, status. And, um, and we provide as well educa uh, nutrition education, um, which helps them uh, to use the food that is available on the market in the best way, uh, to cook it and prepare it in the best way so that it's adequate uh, to the children. Just a final question for those who are watching this evening, who are uh, touched by this topic and, and want to help, what, what can they do? So I would uh, tell them that uh, they can uh, easily uh, uh, donate uh, to WFP. So on WFP.org, uh, we have a donation page. And we also have um, a smartphone application that is called Share the Meal. So everyone who has a smartphone can make a small donation. And with 40 cents, uh, they can um, provide a meal to a, a child in need. Next, for young people across the African continent, competition for jobs continues to be fierce. This week, at one recruitment event for top international companies, they interviewed candidates on the spot. Our team in Abidjan followed one young woman who's pulling out the stops to gain her dream job. Aud has a slightly more stressful day ahead of her than normal. All being well, she's about to secure a range of on-the-spot interviews with some of the biggest companies in the region. I've been going through my CV, adapting it for today, and adding my latest experience. The 24-year-old got a British MBA from an Indian business school and has already had her first success with it. She's got through the selection process for job hunters wanting to attend the Afric Talents recruitment event, arranged by Africa Search in Abidjan. Over 12,000 candidates applied this year for Afric Talents, and around 1,500 to 2,000 got through. These candidates can then meet the companies here without there being too many people. It ensures a better quality of connections. Société Générale, Endeavour Mining, Bolloré, some of the biggest employers in the country and entire region are on hand. Aude Giro heads to British American Tobacco and persuades them to interview her, and in English. Around 10 minutes later, she comes away looking positive. I think that the company is looking for someone with my kind of profile. And to be honest with you, I'm actually really pleased with how it went. The recruiter was similarly upbeat. He's hoping to hire up to a dozen new staff at the event. So she's very enthusiastic about, um, about um, BAT. Um, also very clear in terms of the roles she's interested in. With at least one in five young people unemployed in Ivory Coast and the highly educated taking longer to find work, Aude and other attendees hope this event will give them a significant head start. And finally for you, we take you to the Mauritanian capital, Nouakchott, which is home to one of the biggest uh, camel markets on the continent. As this next report shows, the humped animals, which are sold for several hundred euros a time, play a central role in Mauritanians' livelihood. Hundreds of camels arrive here very early each morning. The market is just outside Mauritania's capital, Nouakchott. It's one of the biggest in West Africa. Some of these animals have travelled 1,000 kilometres in two days to get here. About 500 camels are sold every day. In Mauritania, there are 4 million people and around 2 million camels. Brahim has just bought one. I bargained. First he wanted 480 euros for it, but in the end I got it for 430. He chose this young male. Soon he will be eaten. But in the north of the country and in the Sahara Desert, camels have been used for centuries to transport people and goods. Here, 90% of people rely on camels for their livelihoods. Camels helped us build this nation. They're part of our history. And there's one other thing that camels provide for Mauritanians, milk. I sell this milk. That's how I make a living. Drinking camel milk and playing in the dunes is how many Mauritanians like to relax after a long day at school or at work. Right, very much uh, up to date. Stay tuned uh, here on France 24 for more international headlines.